Hello everyone and welcome to a new makeup transformation as you could tell by my big blue eyes inspired by Gaston the big buff male villain from the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast. Continuing on with our Disney villain series, I really wanted to not only transform myself into a male because those are creepy and weird and my favorites thing to do. Is that a weird hobby to have? But I am going to do another two-parter makeup where I transform into Gaston and then I'm gonna have a creepy twist to it. Like what if Gaston had his eye gouged out by an arrow being shot into it when he was fighting the beast. Maybe he was not only in the fight with the beast, but maybe the townspeople accidentally got a hold of him instead. So many things could happen. We'll just see. First, I want to put on a wig cap because unfortunately I do not have Gaston's luscious thick black hair like he has on his forehead because my hairline's not receding and it's not as great as his. So we're going to put on a wig later. And of course, I'm not naked while filming this video. I do have a cover up. I feel like I always need to say this just to make sure. And making sure that wig cap is in place. Next, we are going to put on some face prosthetics. These are foam prosthetics of a nose and a chin. This was literally the only large chin prosthetic I could find. But first, I'm gonna use some top guard to make my prosthetics come off a little bit easier in the removal process later. First, we're gonna apply the nose on, make sure it fits our face, and then I'm gonna get some prose with a Q-tip. Put that prosade on our nose a little bit over the area of where our prosthetic nose is going to lay on our face and then put some prosade on the actual prosthetic appliance piece. Just put two and two together and make sure your edges are good. You may have to add some prosade in certain places even more. And then we're gonna do the same steps on our chin prosthetic. I feel like chin prosthetics are a little bit easier although my face is so round it's hard for me to find chin prosthetics that look okay and natural on my face and plus this is a joker chin which is the only super large cleft chin prosthetic I could find that would look similar to Gaston so it has a large bottom lip but Gaston also had a large bottom lip we will see how this turns out once your appliances are laid, I am going to get a red stipple sponge with some liquid latex. You could use either clear liquid latex or a skin color latex. I find that clear is easier to see the edges and where you're stippling at. I cut my stipple sponges into triangles because using the smaller edge, I like to do that first to originally apply the liquid latex and then using the larger edge to blend it out and stipple it more later. You know, blend it into the skin. You don't want it to look like we just put a giant fake nose on. And then you want to use a hair dryer. It's an easier process to make it dry quicker. And you want to use some translucent powder on the appliance to make it less tacky and to see your edges better. Now that our edges are laid on these appliances, I'm gonna get some Pax paint that matches my skin tone with a disposable makeup sponge. Please, whatever you do, you do not use your foundation brushes to apply Pax paint because it will ruin them. I've known this by past experiences when I was first trying Pax paint because it has some prosade in it so that it makes a layer on your appliance more tacky so that you could layer other paints on it after you set it. And this is one of the best makeup products you use for foam prosthetics. You want to apply this PAX not only on the prosthetic appliances, but you want it to go a little further than the actual appliance is on your face so that when we put other foundation on our actual skin, it won't blend into on top of the actual foam because regular foundations could deteriorate foam prosthetics. I know I just painted the appliances on my nose and chin, but before I move on to the rest of the makeup on my face, I just got some brown eyeliner and did the outline of Gaston's shirt that we're gonna body paint on later. The regular drugstore foundation I'm gonna use today is my all-time favorite, the CoverGirl 301 Outlast Stay Fabulous Foundation. It matches this Pax paint almost perfectly in color. You really want to make sure your Pax paint and whatever foundation you're gonna use matches perfectly together. I wouldn't put Pax paint all over your bare skin because it does have prosade in it, so it's very more difficult to take off than actual regular foundation. That's why I'm using two different makeups. While you're laying on this foundation, you really want to cake it on, girl, because depending on the coverage of your foundation, this is a medium to full coverage foundation, so it starts off medium. I really need to cake it on to make sure it's very opaque next to that Pax paint because the Pax paint is so full coverage, and I don't want it to look blotchy next to the Pax paint. 
I'm using my Expert Face Brush by Real Techniques because it's my all-time favorite foundation brush. You want to bring that foundation down onto your neck and right above that V angle of the outline of Gaston's shirt that we drew on with the eyeliner before. You need it to go smoothly blend in from neck to chin to chest. And I'm gonna conceal his under eyes with some Urban Decay Weightless Concealer because he's a jerk and he's handsome but he doesn't have under eye bags like I do. Powdering down that entire face. Now it's time to get a contour. Gaston has some very impressive cheekbones. So I'm gonna get a contour cream color that's more cool tone and start carving out them cheekbones, girl. Using a Beauty Blender sponge, I'm gonna blend out that contour cream. And contouring the center of my eyebrows to make it more manly and masculine, I feel like contouring this area of your eyes makes your eyes look more hooded because the brow bone is more prominent in men than it is in women. Contouring on the outer corner of your eyes, Next, I'm getting a cream blush because even men blush sometimes. I'm getting the lightest, most natural cream blush color from my Balm palette. And now it is time to stipple on that five o'clock shadow. In the cartoons, Gaston may not have a five o'clock shadow of some stipple of little facial hairs poking through. I'm using a black stipple sponge to paint on this five o'clock shadow, but I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. And if you have a man with that dark of a hair color, of course he's gonna have a five o'clock shadow quicker than you can believe. Especially in ye old times when they have to shave their whole entire face with a single razor blade. Next, I'm coloring in Gaston's lips. I used a cream blush color. After them lips, we're gonna move on to my favorite part, drawing on Gaston's eyebrows. I'm getting a very thin eyeliner brush with a black cream paint and just start drawing on some eyebrow hairs. You want to do these in brush-like motions to make them look like realistic hairs. You want these eyebrows thick, but not touch all the way together, that are arched. They're shaped. It's like he's had them well manicured. And they look like they could almost form into unibrow, but they quite don't meet there. Like maybe he shaves it down the middle because it's guessed on. And he cares about his good looks, we all know that. Once you're done with those eyebrows, I'm giving him some crow's feet with the contour color. And I'm gonna give Gaston some chest hair, stippling on some hair color paints there with a black stipple sponge. And once we're done painting most of our facial features, I'm gonna contour my neck, yes, because men have this thing called Adam's apple that most women don't have. I am also gonna put a little bit of mascara on because you know when girls say, guys, eyelashes are so much more prettier than mine, that happens a lot in my life. I don't know about yours, but that's why I'm giving him some mascara eyes. I'm gonna get some aqua paint in yellow and start painting on Gaston's collar of a shirt that we outlined before with the brown eyeliner pencil. You could paint a little bit over the brown eyeliner, it's just there as a guide and we could shade in areas later. You want a golden yellow color that looks almost like the yellow brick road from The Wizard of Oz. And then I'm gonna get some orange aqua paint. Gaston's shirt is red somewhat in some lighting, but it's definitely a deep dark orange. You want to make sure you don't paint over the yellow collar and try not to leave streak marks and make it as opaque as you can. Don't forget to get as low on your shirt as you can. We're gonna get some brown aqua paint and do some shadow marks around the collar. If you get some brown aqua paint and don't put too much water in it, you could definitely use it to shadow in over other aqua paints. As long as it doesn't look like poop smeared all over your painted on shirt. You want this shirt to look realistic as you can. Speaking of realistic, I'm gonna then outline it with some black aqua paint by Wolf Brothers with a very thin paintbrush. This takes a very steady hand and it makes it look a little bit more cartoony but at the same time it outlines it so people's eyes will be drawn to it and at the same time they'll be like, did you just paint that on or is that real? They won't know the difference. It might look like a real piece of clothing if you do it correctly. And now it is time to put on that wig, girl. I just got a regular female's pitch black wig from Amazon and I cut in some receding hairlines myself, did a little touch of my own little creation, and I also got some bobby pins to create that Jersey Shore poof that Gaston is famous for having. That reminds me of the girls from that TV show, Jersey Shore. He would fit in that show perfectly. And I'm gonna use a little prose to glue on the wig in the front a little bit near his receding hairline so it won't go anywhere. You want to style Gaston's hair as a cute little low ponytail and some more neutral brown cream paints from my Poise Multitasking Creams. Giving Gaston some more contour because his cheekbones just need to rise to the heavens. 
And with that, you're completely done with your Gaston from Beauty and the Beast makeup transformation. I feel like if Gaston was alive in real life, this is what he would kind of look like. Chest hair, bare and all. That's why I felt like he needed a 5 o'clock shadow if he has that much chest hair. Those blue eyes with those brows, girl, are so to die for. You could be done here, but you could stick around for a more creepier twist. I'm gonna get a makeup remover wipe and remove the makeup on my right eye. Whatever eye is near your dominant painting hand, I chose my right, which is on your left, because we are going to need to make an eye patch. I'm making an eye patch out of a piece of a bald cap and just cutting in a hole so I can see out of this eye patch while I'm doing the makeup and doing a wound on my face, using some prose to lay down that eye patch so I don't totally do a whole makeup with just one eye and I could see out of both eyes a little bit and then stippling on some liquid latex making sure it dries with a blow dryer now it's time for the gouge eye effect I'm gonna get some third degree you could totally use gelatin but I would not suggest using gelatin because what if it gets too hot because you have to melt gelatin in a microwave or in boiling water and it's that close to your eye I would not suggest you do this unless you're very much more of an advanced makeup artist because you could totally hurt and damage your eye. I got some prosade with this fake arrow that I made. I made sure I made this arrow completely out of foam so that's lightweight and if I accidentally fall with this arrow this close to my eye in real life, it will not gouge my eye out or if I accidentally hit my hand with it, I won't go blind in real life. I painted it myself. It took a very long time. I literally made it out of Nerf dart guns from the kids store. You know those fake plastic guns that shoot foam bullets? Those foam bullets is what this is made out of. As you can see, I'm not putting this arrow directly in my eye or on it. I'm putting it off to the side on my cheekbone. This is key because you don't want to gouge your actual eye out and go to the emergency room to see the real horror stories. The prose doesn't really help it stick unless you put some third degree around that fake arrow to make it stay a little better. But again, please make sure you don't put any product in your actual eye. That's why I have this eye patch. I mean, there is a hole next to my eye, but I'm really trying to make sure that nothing goes in there. It's kind of like life casting in a smaller size. If you've ever done life casting on human to make real prosthetics in a lab, a hair dryer really helps here. Make sure you close your eyes so you won't dry your eye out, especially wear contacts while you're using this hair dryer this close to your eye. And don't put it on heat. I would put it on cool. It'll still dry all the third degree to make sure that arrow is going to stick in place. Then I'm getting some foundation and going over that third degree in that eye patch to make it blend better into the rest of our skin. This is going to make it look like real flesh near your eye. Now I'm just getting some fake blood with a Q-tip. I have a fake blood little vial kit. I'm getting some thick bright blood first to do areas around my eye. And then I'm getting some darker thick blood to make chunks of it around the corners of my eye. Then you want to get some of that real drippy blood and drip not only from your eye, but also maybe from the corner of your mouth a little bit. Yeah, some coming out of your nose. And I even took that Q-tip and did a hole, like a stab mark in his chest because I felt like it just needed something else. And then I got some black cream paint to put on my eyelid inside of that eye patch wounded eye area. So that when we close our eye after wounding ourselves, it will be completely pitch black and gross like a hollow eye that just got knocked out by an arrow. And with that, we are completely done with our Gaston from Beauty and the Beast makeup transformation with the creepy twist of him getting shot in the eye with an arrow. Who else would think of these? My mind is just in all the weirdest places. I feel like fans of Belle from Beauty and the Beast would really appreciate this because Gaston acts like such a jerk in the movie. Maybe he was shot because he was trying to kill the beast and maybe the townspeople turned on him instead. But now it's sadly time to turn back into a female, into my original self. Or I would rather prefer an alien because I'm totally an alien with everything I'm allergic to and think of. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Taking this off was such a hassle, but isopropyl Miristate is always there to save the day. All the products that I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box as always, including the sexy big nose and this fake chest hair. I had so much fun making this. This took around four hours. It was one of the hardest makeups I've ever done. So I hope you guys like it. There'll be more transformations to come with prosthetics and crazy twists. Leave me a comment down below on what is your favorite Disney villain. I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you all. Bye.